I'm Jack. I'm a practice-based designer. So some of you are probably wondering what that is. Well, my practice mainly revolves around social projects. And to do that, I try to challenge the systems of infrastructure. Now, that means I actually can't restrict myself to one element of design. And those elements mainly revolve around sociology. So in my work, I try to push for the idea of people to understand the importance of social sustainability and social projects. Now, in this role, I have to be many different people. I've got to wear loads of different hats. So I've got to be an activist, a community-based designer, and foremost, a maker. Now, I've come to learn, actually, that these roles are really important when engaging with a community or involving a project that involves a community. And as I said, I try to push people to understand this because there are other factors which are just as important. So when we speak about sustainability, I'm sure you've heard today and you all know, we usually think about environmental, so climate change, global warming, etc. But in my case, I want people to understand social issues. And social issues actually include a lot more than we think. They involve healthcare, politics, education, psychology, and equality. And now the intersection between all of these is where I start the story. So, Antenna, I want to take you all back. I want you to imagine you're all at high school again. I want you to imagine you're all 16. And yes, I want you to imagine about sex. Very quiet, that's a good response, I like this. So I don't want you to think about the first time you had sex, we don't want to hear about that. I want you to think about sexual education. So, think about this. What type of sex ed did you receive? How many lessons did you have? Who taught you this sex ed? And keep these questions in the back of your mind. So, this is me at age 16, and yes, I'm the one on the right with the really awful hair. It was a style choice, I promise, at the time. So, I went to high school in the UK for seven years. So that's five lessons a day, so that's 25 lessons a week. And if we calculate that up, that comes to just under about 7,000 lessons in total. And in my seven years of experience, I had one lesson on sexual education, and it was awful. So it's one lesson crammed in this basic information. How do we put a condom on a banana? Don't get pregnant, be healthy. And if anyone has seen that scene from Mean Girls, then you know what I'm talking about with this. So I left, and I didn't know anything about how to ha have a healthy relationship with someone of the same sex as me. But that was nine years ago. So has it changed since? So in the UK, and I can say this because we're British, we pride ourselves on being, thinking that we're forward, we're open, we're accepting, we're forward thinking. And we are, yes, that's very, very, very true. But when it comes to educating the public around these topics, again, we're still very British. So the problem with that, in the background of this, in the last two years, there's been this huge media storm of people in the public eye calling for the curriculum in England to be updated. So the UK government set out a consultation last year. So the Department for Education is one who deals with this. And it called for parents, for teachers, for students, and I myself, to give their feedback on what they think should be updated in the new curriculum. And they listened, and for the first time in history, they made sex ed compulsory in England. Which is great, right, yeah? Yeah? No. So, whilst this is wildly received, trust me, and long overdue, their teaching kind of misses some very important factors. So, it completely omits the LGBTQI plus community, all types of sexual practices, their viewpoint on a family dynamic has this hierarchical status, what sex is, what sex is not, and excludes any teaching of non-monogamous relationships. So the problem with this is actually, if we're not being inclusive, we're actually denying those students who are already underrepresented. And unfortunately, the LGBTQI plus community are at the forefront of this. So when all this came out, there was a lot of information, it was a big time in the UK. Tried to read it all, got really overwhelmed by it, so I thought, right, get out of my head. So I started speaking to family, to friends, to my colleagues, and I asked them what they actually knew about sex ed. And so I asked them about sex, gender, sexuality, contraceptives, and it turned out they actually knew a lot about the basics, which was good. But for example, couldn't tell me the difference between pansexual and transgender. And that kind of frustrated me personally. So I started looking at the previous kits on the market. And if I'm preaching to the choir here, I think they're quite outdated, quite uninviting, and weirdly male-orientated, but heteronormative, I think. So I thought about the ethos of this. What am I interested in as a designer? How can I engage people? How can I have an impact? How can I remove that heteronormativity from sex ed? 
Otherwise, students are going elsewhere for information, whether that's online to YouTubers or playground culture, and potentially accessing damaging information, which is unreliable. So how did I respond to this? Well, so my MA project at Material Futures at St. Martins looked at developing and prototyping the UK's first inclusive sexual education kit, which is inclusive of all communities. Now, in this kit, it was designed with something called curriculum-based design, which means all the design processes and the design outcomes are created in a way that enhances the learning for all students. So this is the thing, we all learn differently. Every school will teach differently, every student will learn differently. Some of us prefer written instructions, some of us prefer listening, some of us prefer you know, by doing in kinesthetics. So the problem is, it needs to be accessible to everybody, it needs to be holistic. And ultimately, it comes down to some sort of interaction or activity that is accessible. And how do we do that? Well, in school, it's suggested that students at their time, while they're learning about these topics, their learning should be consolidated. So as part of the kit, I proposed and wrote a curriculum that links my topics to other subjects in high school, such as health and biology, uh, relationships in drama, contraceptives in religious education, for example. So that means that it needs to be holistic. And how do we do that? Well, the kit provides a number of resources, as you can see, and this is just a few of them. So we've got literature handouts, podcasts, videos, period products, contraceptives. And my most important one is the silicone genital models. So to create these, I had some very interesting experiences. I had some very lovely volunteers come to my studio. And live casting, let's just say, is one of the most intimate things you will ever do as a designer. It's very good, but they were very nice, very, very supportive. So I used live casting techniques and traditional molding techniques. And as I was developing these models through many iterations, kind of stopped and realized, ah, how do we represent a genital? So, how do we represent a biological penis or vulva? How do we represent a transgender vulva or penis? Because the problem is, we actually can't. So, our bodies are different. We are all different. So, this kind of stuck me for a bit. So, as, 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 as I was developing these, I sort of then stood back and realized, right, what we need is a basic representational model. And this model will then be used for teaching of hygiene. So how to use the body parts and interaction. And that actually came out to be the best tool. And that kind of impacted then my drawing and the aesthetics using for the kit. So I was thinking, okay, in this curriculum, should my drawings and aesthetic be simplistic? Should they be really detailed like a Grey's Anatomy book or somewhere in between? Because actually the resources need to stand out on their own accord, but actually work holistically together. And that then impacted my thinking and ideas of colour theory. And I love colour, I think colour is a really important factor in design. So, looked into the colour receptors of how students between the ages of 11 and 18 actually respond to these in the classroom. And it was quite interesting to find out going through tests of various different colours with people and model and iterations, that actually the best colours came out were green and blue. Now, green is associated with growth and with health, and blue is associated with trustworthiness and security. So actually, these colours combined, A, will work for a gender-neutral approach. So I'm very against the idea of blue for boys and pink for girls. I think that's an outdated concept right now. And by doing this, it actually enhances the learning experience and the receptors for the students who are being taught through this. So, what is the main reason for all these resources I'm talking about? Well, this is based on a teaching methodology we call object-based learning. Now, this is a methodology where we have an object present, like this, for example, and to be able to actually to hold, to feel, to see, to smell, to lick, if you want to, the object actually enhances the learning facility versus what it would be if we didn't have the object actually present. So, what I'm really trying to sum up here for you guys is, I want to break all the taboos around sex ed. I think this is something that's a really important factors in our lives, which we're not speaking about, and especially in the UK, for example. This is something we need to be open about and discuss with people, because it's actually really, really important. Ultimately, my goal here is to see that every student can access an information or education that addresses their personal needs, will actually give them a voice and actually allows them to be heard. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Jack, Thank you very, very much. much for your presentation. I was. More